We all have the ability to start a crowdfunding campaign, the ability to make a video and share our brilliant idea to the world. And although sometimes that works out pretty great, other times not so much. And today, ladies and gentlemen, off the back of doing quite a few videos based around animation, which as you probably know by now, I am quite a big fan of, what I'm going to be doing today is finally digging deep into the world of comic books. Well, actually, I've done a few videos on comic books in the past, but this is the one that's going to explode. <laughs> yes. As this is a kick scammer video, we're obviously going to be looking into some of the strangest and scammiest stories to ever come out of the world of comic books from places like Indiegogo and Kickstarter. <laughs> and guys, let me tell you now that this video gets weird pretty damn fast. So we're not going to keep you hanging about at all. Let's get right to it. Hi everybody, I'm Daniel Robertson, aka DJ Slope from Slope's Game Room, and this is Five Super Strange Comic Books. But, but, but guys, before we go ahead, I have a message for you, yes you, the person that constantly emails me asking for advice on their Kickstarter campaign. <laughs> I can't help you, but I do know somebody that can. This video sponsor, Skillshare. I'm sure you've all heard of Skillshare in the past. They get promoted on quite a few YouTube videos and for good reason. In case you don't know, Skillshare is an online learning platform that has over 30,000 online courses for you to get addicted to. And whether it's learning how to create YouTube videos, or I suppose comic book design is relevant for this video. Or if you're like me, then you're probably more into something like social media marketing, which is exactly what I'm using the service for as we speak. Whatever it is you're looking for, you are going to find what you need on Skillshare and more than likely find an extensive amount of information on that topic. However, if you want my suggestion on what I think you guys should be looking up, well, it's obviously going to be crowdfunding, isn't it? <laughs> Don't end up on one of my videos. Get yourself over to Skillshare and basically learn how to do it right. And guys, best of all, if you go and use the link below, you can do what I've done and basically get two months free to basically experience any of these or other courses completely for free. I bet the guys in this video wish they used my two month free trial. So, here's a first for you. In this segment, I'm going to give you two entirely different campaigns that basically had the same weird thing happen to them. First, you got the Indiegogo Like a Virus, a comic book by Ken Lowry, one of the creators of the web series, The Variant, and Robert Wilson IV, who worked on the awesome Knucklehead series. And secondly, you got Ethan Van Skyver, who has worked on plenty of well-established characters such as Batman, Green Lantern, Superman, and X-Men, to name a few, with his campaign, Cyberfrog Blood Honey. Both comics were successful, and some. In fact, Cyberfrog ended up breaking records for crowdfunding comic book projects, and everyone that backed it, as far as I can tell, got their rewards. The Like A Virus campaign is a tad more sketchy in all honesty. The comment section does indeed have quite a few people asking for replacements or not getting the comic book at all, but do keep in mind that these comments were made several years ago and they very much could have been sent out by now. I can't see any negativity since then, so you know, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt because who knows. Regardless, it looks like both campaigns got good feedback for the most part in the end. However. It's what happened during the campaign that was quite unique to both of these two comic books. You see guys, even though I've shown you Like a Virus as an Indiegogo project and Cyberfrog as a Kickstarter project, that's not where they started. In fact, they originally started their life on the opposite platform. Confused? <laughs> Don't worry, Slope is here to help. Because what you have seen up to this point are actually copyright campaigns created by unknown individuals who quite literally copy and pasted the original campaign and put it up on the other website. 
The more popular cyber fraud campaign didn't get very far, gaining over $47 from four backers before word spread and it got cancelled. And the same went for Like a Virus that gained only $10 before that one was cancelled. However, in an interview with the Daily Dot, one of the hardest things to tackle here for the owners was the searching around of random forums trying to update posts that the scammers actually went crazy on promoting their fake campaign. In fact, according to that same interview, the scammers actually did more marketing to promote the fake campaign than the original guys did on the main one. And because of that, it does make you think. What would the outcome be if it wasn't for the fake campaign's excellent marketing strategy? Hmm. Yep, this one's gonna be quick and simple because there really isn't much to it. Roll the video. Hello, my name is Alexandra Douglas. I'm a freelance illustrator and aspiring webcomic artist. You may recognize my work from games like Netrunner and Infiltration, Paint the Line, and Eternal Odyssey 4, contributions to Andrew Hussey's Homestuck, and my participation in Penny Arcade's new webcomic reality show, Strip Search. But it's been my dream since high school to write and illustrate my own comics. So, in a nutshell, it's no more than simply a 32 page foil stamped comic which eventually went up to 36 pages, along with a few extra bits and bobs like stickers and pins for higher tiered backers. The eventual release of the comic was expected to be September 2013, and best of all, this lass is doing all of this out of the sheer love for comic books because if you go to cloudfactorycomics.com you can actually read this comic for free, you don't even have to back it. In other words, you're not backing for the comic, you're backing the person. And I gotta say, stunning. This artwork, in my opinion, is probably some of the best in this entire video. It's simply beautiful. Which is why the campaign got over $83,000 when all she was asking for was seven and a half thousand. Oh, and by the way, she was also accepting donations from Patreon and PayPal too. So who knows what that eventual figure became. Alexandra Lexi Douglas had worked on plenty of big gaming projects in the past and it was obvious that this was going to be done in between those projects. However, with all that money it was surely going to entice her to get it done rather quickly, right? Well, not really, because if you do go back to that website you will discover that the best part of $100,000 gets you 8 pages of artwork. And that's where we are. Some people have had their smaller rewards and like most of these campaigns, a lot of the backers are not that upset. Probably because they backed the artist and not the reward as stated. That was just a perk. But the ones that are upset are quite vocal. You see, there's no printing issues here, no manufacturing issues or anything like that. It's Alexandra simply just not wanting to do it anymore. Which in turn makes this probably one of the worst campaigns going. Looking into the comments, in my opinion, the issue here is the extra rewards. Sure, it's those that probably got it up to such a massive number, but when those rewards are one-off exclusive sketches and whatnot, it seems that Alexandra just simply burnt herself out before the project even got underway. However, with all that said, she is still doing plenty of artwork, it seems, so who knows why she stopped. Every year or so, she comes back to say she's gonna continue working on it, but nothing ever gets done. And here we are, the one you all knew, the ones that know about it at least, was going to be included in this video. The webcomic Sad Pictures for Children. So basically in this one it's probably best that we start with John Campbell. But you know, obviously before this picture was taken. You see, John created quite a few online webcomics and the one he was most known for was Pictures for Sad Children. Now the thing with Pictures for Sad Children was the fact that it was unlike anything and I do mean anything that I had personally ever read before. 
The comics were incredibly simple, but still, they gained a huge following mostly by people that suffered with or were interested in learning more about depression and anxiety. To a lot of you out there, this may be simply stupid, but hold up, hold up, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Some of you watching this may not get this at all, but others... I'm not going to say that the ones that get it are more intelligent. I personally get no enjoyment out of it at all. But I think that's because I can't relate to this comic book in any way, shape or form. And I'm guessing quite a lot of you watching will feel the same way. And just like you, I find it confusing. However, calling it stupid isn't the way to go. You see, over the five years that these very minimalistic grayscale comics constantly got churned out, the fan base just grew and grew. This led to the creation of his first self-published book and if you want further proof that these simple looking comics are designed for a particular group of individuals and that those individuals don't just like but love John Campbell's work, look no further than the customer reviews. Anyway, as the popularity of these webcomics grew and grew as stated, it was about time for John to go ahead and get his second book published and this is where Kickstarter came in. Here comes the Facey Insider. After their batting, Salman shared... We will see the fieldy building. We will see the fieldy building. We can do this too. We can see our batting. We will see our team's captain. His name is Rani Mukherjee. Yep, there's no need to adjust your television sets, you're not in the twilight zone, what you're actually seeing is the campaign video for pictures for sad children. Obviously John's popularity had grown so much that he didn't really need to show it off in this video, but instead he can go ahead and be his usual quirky self. So in short, the book got funded. He asked for $8,000 and he got $51,615 from 1,073 backers. All was good. And for all of you guys out there that want to see updates about a guy that claims he got hit by an imaginary ghost train whilst paramedics almost drowned in the sea, can do just that. <laughs> Seriously, this is without a doubt one of the strangest Kickstarter update threads I've ever seen. The sun destroying Kickstarter can move aside. These updates are so bizarre that for the first time ever on this show, they're blocked. Literally, you can't find them unless you go via places like the Wayback Machine. I've seen blocked campaigns, sure, but never updates. It's very, very strange. Thankfully, I was able to see them via things like Google Cash. Thank you, Andrew Dalton, one of my Patreons who helped me out with that one. And thankfully, not everything was quite this bizarre. You see, some of those updates were actually based on the book itself. Thankfully, and it's actually pretty damn nice looking. Gotta give this guy his due between the ramblings he was actually getting it done. Although sadly that did come at the cost of some pretty extreme delays. The book was supposed to arrive in May of 2012 or June if you include the update made during the campaign's life. And by early February 2014, he simply had enough of people sending him emails asking the same question over and over and over. Where's my book? Where's my book? So he posted this video update. One hundred and twenty-seven books got burnt that night according to this post that also included a 5,000 page essay saying that 75% had been shipped and no further books will be shipped. He had simply had enough of people asking him where their books were. What followed was the removal of anything John Campbell from the internet, this kickstarter and everything that came with it shined a light onto his work that John very much didn't like. His website is gone, his email is gone, and five years of webcomics have gone too. 
Thankfully, you can find plenty of bits here and there by searching for sad pictures for children. But this book that actually had a dead bee mailed out of it, by the way. Yep, that's something that happened. Has become incredibly sought after by backers that even after seeing this post, still looked up to John. And you know what? Maybe I'm one of those sort of people that just doesn't understand this because I tell you what, if I was a backer, I wouldn't be happy. I wouldn't be happy with that big fire incident. And I wouldn't be happy with the previous post as well where he, uh, well, he said that he was pretending to have depression himself all along, you know, to help sales. And then did another post saying that he was faking, faking depression. I don't know. The whole thing's just so bizarre. Regardless, as stated, the fans still looked up to him, and even though some of them didn't get a book, they did actually share the book by sending it around to each other so that everyone got to experience it. On top of this, Max Temkin, who was one of the creators of Cards Against Humanity, stepped in and offered to pick up the remaining books that weren't burnt and out of his own pocket mail them out to every single backer that had not got one, and from what I can tell, now everybody does have one, I think. This is a seriously odd campaign. Was the burning of the books just a marketing stunt? Was John pretending to be depressed? <laughs> Who knows? It's hard for me to see this campaign and its owner as nothing more than, well, a bit of a douche. Hiding behind his strange humour as a way to get around running out of money and not sending backers their rewards. But at the same time, it's hard to get angry at someone like this when it looks like pretty much all of his backers were not that upset by it. What gives me the right to kick off about it when his own backers didn't care? It turns out that this is just the way that John was. And guys, <laughs> I don't get it. This guy is Benny Powell, and Benny Powell has had quite a few campaigns, five to be exact. The first was for a book version of his fairly popular webcomic Wayward Sons that didn't hit target. He then tried again, this time with a slightly overhauled page, and that one did get funded by 25 backers, getting it to a humble $1,923, and backers got their rewards. And now we have the final three campaigns. Japan Needs Heroes, Japan Needs Heroes 2, and Wayward Sons Volume 3 and 4. These also hit target. But currently, nobody has got their rewards yet. There are quite a few commenters that really do go to town in these campaigns detailing every little thing that's gone wrong with it. And honestly, the part of the video where I give the big twist, well, it doesn't really exist in this segment. It's simply an incredibly badly mismanaged project. T-shirt manufacturing issues, extreme delays with getting the work done, posts that blame the artists, other posts that claim more pages are done than actually are done, as they backtrack that later on in future posts, and claims that extra money will go on tsunami relief efforts, which obviously also didn't happen. Which is a little bit shitty. Seriously, there's not one thing wrong with this campaign, but instead, Everything is wrong with this campaign. Again, he has done five campaigns in total, and out of the four successful ones, only one has been fulfilled. Which begs the question, $17,860 plus $5,860 plus $8,420 equaling $32,140 has resulted in 761 angry backers left out of pocket. And what I want to know is... How has he been able to get away with constantly starting up campaign after campaign after campaign when he is not fulfilling any of them? There's just simply no answer to any of this on this particular segment, guys, as it is, simply as stated, just an incredibly mismanaged set of projects. I wanna take <laughs> hey, guys. Thanks for checking out the video. I want to give a big special shout out to this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Yes, thank you very much, guys, for sponsoring the show. Uh, I do highly suggest you go down there and uh, do the two-month uh, trial, so you can, uh, you know, go and check out anything that you're interested in, uh, and you know, basically school yourself up. Like I said, I have been using it myself to uh, find out how to boost my Instagram a little bit more. So go and you know, follow me over on Instagram to see what I've been doing with that. And um, yeah. I highly suggest you go over there, especially if you're starting a Kickstarter. You could do a lot worse than a two-month free trial, couldn't you?
Yes. But anyway, guys, let's get over to the Patreons that help out every single episode. With a big special shout out going to Gary Pinkett, that retro video gamer, Mantis, Ryan Burford, Andrew Dalton, Ben Jackson, Jonathan Hayward, Kevin Kong, Christopher Turnbull, Phil Lowland, Tomic Rabowski, Retro to Next Gen, Hawk89, Dina Robertson Dunn, Lefty Intrigued Gaming, Abby Morris, Tim Levante, Asobi Quang DX, Tim Lunn, Hananas, Pixels.Limited, aka Samuel Victor, Red the Beard, Conrad Constant, Team, Pretendo 64, Creamy Elephants, Casey Garner, Blitz Hedging, King Link Reviews, Gem <laughs> Gemma at Mr. T's Shirts, Wobbles and Bean, The Wonder Ducks, Yelled Hamburger, Lab, You Right, Dan Petit, Mike H. Fell, Lucas Softel, Gregory Arden, Ronnie Method, SSWP, <laughs> Solex Captor, Jeremy Rodriguez, Nick Pollard, Bram Perez, Marcus King and McCut, Tyndall, June the Geeky Dad, Richard Carter, aka Fantastic Dizzy, Todd, Pitch, Pool, Pitch, Float, psh, G, and of course, Petty Mew. If you guys want to get your name shouted out, get your name shown, come and see what I'm working on, and all of the usual stuff that these patrons get all of the time, then, you know, why not click the link that you see on the screen? Don't forget to subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, a thumbs down, whatever you prefer. If you are sharing this stuff over on places like Reddit and what have you, then obviously a massive thanks to you. Oh, yes, an extra big shout out goes out to the subreddit, Shitty Kickstarters, as well, because, you know, those guys over there are awesome. But anyway, that's enough for me. This is DJ Slope signing out. And hopefully I'll see you all next time.